When Henry Ford introduced his low-price, highly efficient Model T in 1908, it created pressure for the federal government to become more involved with road development. In 1916, the Federal Aid Road Act was passed by Congress. Under this program, funds were made available on a continuous basis to state highway agencies to assist in road improvements. However, the U.S. entered World War I before the program could get a start. Things picked back up in the 1920s when the Bureau of Public Roads was authorized by the Federal Highway Act of 1921 to provide funding to help state highway agencies construct a paved system of two-lane interstate highways. With much of the construction taking place during the Great Depression, it created employment opportunities for many people. During World War II, the focus turned to providing the military with roads they needed. And then after the war, congestion became a problem in many cities, and President Franklin D. Roosevelt signed legislation in 1944 authorizing a network of rural and urban express highways, which was called the National System of Interstate Highways. Because the legislation lacked funding, it was only after President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Act of 1956 that the interstate program really began. It was hailed as the greatest public work project in history and in 1966 the U.S. Department of Transportation was established. The Federal Highway Administration worked with states to open 99 percent of the designated 42,800 mile interstate system which is now officially named the Dwight D. Eisenhower National System of Interstate and Defense Highway. Today our interstate system is a huge part of everyday life and is used as a common form of transportation all across the United States. A more modern form of transportation used today is the maglev train. The first commercial maglev line made its debut in December of 2003. Maglev is short for magnetic levitation, which means that these trains will float over a guideway using the basic principles of magnets to replace the old steel wheel and track trains. If you ever played with magnets, you know that the opposite poles attract and like poles repel each other. This is the basic principle behind electromagnetic propulsion. Electromagnetics are similar to other magnetics in that they attract metal objects, but the magnetic pull is temporary. This idea works much like the magnetic field created when you use a copper wire and attach to either side of a battery. There are three components to the system, a large electrical power source, metal coils lining a guide wire track, and large guidance magnets placed on the underside of the train. What if we could incorporate these ideas into our interstate system? We could use the idea of electromagnetics used for the maglev to pull cars along a guideway of a lane on the road. The metal coils that are used can be placed under the asphalt in a way that they can still work and then when a driver wishes to put their car on autopilot they can simply move, the, move to the lane with the magnetic field. There can be a large guidance magnet placed underneath the car in which that the magnetic field would be turned on or off so that the driver can have the option of either using the lane with electromagnets or not. They would simply move to the designated lane, switch on their magnetic field, put their car in neutral, and enjoy the ride. Not only would this idea be beneficial to the driver, it would also save on the cost of fuel and help protect the environment, and it would also cut down on the number of accidents. Drivers in this lane would be able to get where they wanted faster because their cars would basically be able to drive themselves. This idea would create all sorts of new possibilities for our interstate systems, making it easier and safer to drive on the interstate. 